Aloha. Welcome to the 41st Annual Hawaii International Film Festival presented by Holly Kalani and our discussion with Dante Bosco, director and star of the fabulous Filipino Brothers. We would like to extend our thanks to BMW of Honolulu and Mini of Hawaii for sponsoring this program um, as part of our panorama section. Uh, my name is Anderson Lay and I'm the uh, artistic director for the festival. Uh, first off, before we I introduce our special guest, uh, I want to give a quick land acknowledgement, uh, acknowledging Hawaii as an indigenous space whose original people are identified as the Kanaka Maoli or Native Hawaiians. Uh, first of all, and also quickly, some quick housekeeping bits. So for program updates, for up-to-date information on, on additions to our program and the full schedule of films, events, HIF talk story sessions, and Q&As, visit our website at hif.org, H-I-F-F.org. Uh, regarding audience awards, uh, to participate in our Hawaii News Now audience award voting, please cast your vote via ballot uh, in theaters or online at watch.hif.org or, or on our apps by voting with the um, five stars on our films page. Vote uh, for your favorite narrative, documentary, and short film. Mahalo to Hawaii News Now for their support. Okay, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dante Bosco. Hey, how you doing, Anderson, man? Good to see you. Good to see you, man. I hear like, uh, you know, before our, we started, uh, you know, this, this Q&A, you mentioned that you were on this like roll, rolling tour, right? Traveling yeah, I'm like a big Comic-Con tour all over, the, all over the, the country and the world, actually, from, you know, New York City last week to uh -huh. Indianapolis this weekend, Toronto, Brussels in two weeks. So wow. Atlanta, the week in between. I don't know. It's just been crazy, but uh, crazy. very fun. Awesome. I mean, dude, you're like uh, Dante. You're like, you know, I, I call you API royalty, man. You oh, are. Anderson, come on, you've been knowing me long enough. Nothing, nothing like that, man. Nothing no, like no, that. no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Because, you know, I think, you know, you are, I mean, you're a trendsetter. You're a pioneer as a, not only a Pinoy American uh, actor and filmmaker, but, you know, just uh, you know, the fact that you've uh, been featured in like, so, such seminal films, and especially in the Asian Pacific American scene, with the debut, and also you touch multiple generations. You're intergenerational, man, because you have, I mean, of course, your iconic role as Rufio and Hook, and also as Zuko and Avatar: The Last Airbender, which is basically right. this millennials' version of this is their Star Wars, man. This is their I, Lord of the Rings. I've been, you know? I feel very fortunate. Um, you know, me, I mean, my, my career now, and, and this goes for my brothers and my, my family has spanned over uh, 35 years now in Hollywood. And, you know, you know, as we all know, it's one of the hardest industries in the world. And for us to be over three and a half decades into the industry and now with the next generation moving forward, my, with my niece, Ella J. Bosco and all my other nieces right. and nephews kind of going forward in the industry, I mean, uh, I feel nothing but blessed to still be a part of it and still having the good fortune to um, make movies, tell stories, write books, write poems, uh, continue to work in this industry. And, uh, you know, it's it's a trip when I got young actors and young filmmakers <laughs> and young directors being like, I grew, up, I grew up watching your stuff. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Um, right. It's kind of wild. Uh, but, but I, I, you know, yeah, like everything, you take it in stride and uh, – I support all the, all of the great artists coming up and and want to be continue to be a part of the movement that's happening right now. This really amazing pioneering movement right. of Asians in pop culture media. I mean, you know, you, I mean, you are, are you know a talented talented cat, but you know your whole family is super talented, and this is definitely the epitome of a family affair, man. You you guys you guys are like the Wayans, <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> You know, like you, it's not only you and your your siblings, but it's also your, your like your your nieces, your kids. You know, it's just like it's crazy. You know, like it's like it's absolutely amazing. So, like the Fab fabulous Filipino brothers. Let, let's talk about this, man. It's like a super fun film. Uh, you know, okay. uh, you know, uh, I saw it actually when it world premiered at the South by Southwest Film Festival earlier this oh, yeah. year. Yeah. So, I mean, let's talk about how did you? I mean, you know, uh, how did you get involved? I mean, obviously you get involved with your family, but. I mean, you co-wrote the. What was the idea behind it? Because you co-wrote with your co-wrote it with your brother, right? With um, yeah, I originally yeah. co-wrote it with my brother Darian, and then um, yeah. my other brothers and my sister came in to do some rewrites. Dionisio came in uh, to do some comedy rewrites. My sister Ariana came in, especially to bump up a lot of the female voices and give us a feminine perspective on the thing. But the process starts years ago. Um, 
you know, me and my producing partner, Ron Erickson from The Machine, we've been going in and out of the Philippines now for the last few years before COVID. I mean, I think we did 14 trips in wow. and out of the Philippines. Right. Just pitching and talking. And I, I was able to uh, produce Empty by Design. It was directed by right. Andrea Walter, who cool. ended up yeah. making my film. And it's, you know, like like most things in, in in film, especially with an Asian film and Filipino film, is like it's a family affair and we all become family and it kind of continues to move forward. Uh, but I pitched this film out as being my directorial debut. And like I, uh, you know, when I talk to a lot of young filmmakers out there and I try to just take the advice I give, I try to give is write what you know, write what you know, yeah. shoot in your own backyard. Right. Tell you a story, tell something personal. And um, ironically, when I pitched this film to Signal Films, we ended up producing and financing this film out of the Philippines, Signal Studios and Entertainment. Yeah. Um, it was like, there was a bunch of films we were pitching and television projects. And I said, oh, I also have this other, this project that I'm thinking about directing. It's called The Fabulous Filipino Brothers. And I really just gave this pitch about four brothers, four vignettes, a linear story told out of order, surrounding a Filipino wedding. And uh, oh yeah, by the way, I'm directing it and starring me and my actual brothers, the Bosco brothers. And they literally bought it on the spot. And wow. we were like, okay. And I had not written the script yet. Me and Darian had to go back, we had written a treatment and we went back to write the script in like two months and submit the script and sold the project. And then went about on our path about how to, uh, you know, rewrite, 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 and actually shoot this, this film and create this film um but it's been it's been a journey as, as all things are yeah and so did you i mean did you actually shoot in your your hometown or like where we grew up or yes. i mean all the stories and all the vignettes in the project it, you know although the thing is very fictional it's, yeah. it's all fiction so it's, it's a fairy tale of sorts right um, it's all based upon stories true stories of my family and friends right. And so I was able to bring it back to my hometown of Pittsburgh, California, and yeah. shoot a film in there, the East Bay, off the four freeway in the Bay Area, where me and my family are from, in the mm -hmm. Filipino American community that we grew up in. And then also got to shoot it in Manila and right. use stars from Manila, like Solen Husef and yeah, Chris yeah. the Third, who starred in in the debut with me and my brothers and uh, right. you know, the, the, de the classic, the debut. Sure. And so I, I was fortunate to have a lot of, you know, good, good things happen for this film. Yeah. So, I mean, you, so you went away and you, you and your brother Darian like wrote the script, right? So, I mean, you guys were kind of like just working together. How, when did you, I mean, you said earlier that your other brother came in to beef up some of the comedy bits, but how much of a family affair, how much contribution did they do in developing, did they put in for the development of the script? A lot, oh. man. It's it's a family affair. It's, I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it's a Team Bosco affair. The whole <laughs> family was involved, and my extended family. Right. Um. You know, I wrote a, I wrote my memoirs a few years ago called From Rufio to Zuko, and I and as I was explaining my story, I I, I really explained where, even though I'm telling you my story, I can't I can't tell you it's just my story because it's my family story because we we've done this together. And right. even though I've been the one that got the most shine out of all my brothers and my sister, um, I share my journey with them because it's really our journey of, of a Filipino family in Hollywood. Yeah. That being said, when I made this film, again, I wrote what I knew. I brought in the, you know, I, I leaned into the stories that I knew and brought my, my closest uh, contributors and conspirators my yeah. brothers and my sister in to write this film. It was really a family affair. Everybody knew, everybody knows exactly what stories we're stealing from and taking from and, and, and kind of like elaborating on uh, in each vignette. Um, and the crazy thing is, you know, the other thing that I tell young filmmakers, not only write what you know, get the best actors you know mm. to, to, to shoot the film with because that's going to help you out. That's your, that's your, your paint. That's your paint for your palette, you know? And it just so happens. Some of the best actors I know in the world are my brothers and right. they are great actors and had great careers in their own right. But in this particular film, we were able to write and craft characters that really give them a chance to do what they can do. 
yeah. aspects of, of, of what they can do that Hollywood has not let them really do to the full potential. And a lot of it, not just us as being Asian actors, most actors in Hollywood never get to do what they can actually do. Mm -hmm. And so um, because the unique thing of me being a first time director and working with these guys, and this may never happen again in my career. I've act, my, my lead actors, I've actually seen every, every role and every performance they've ever done in their entire careers. I've seen everything they've done from breakdancing in the streets of San Francisco to school plays, to working out monologues and scenes in acting class, to every stage performance they've done, to every two, three lines in a TV show, to starring in movies and theater and whatever. I've seen all of it because they're my brothers yeah, and they've yeah. seen mine. So in a, in, in a crazy way, you know, and it happens for, for us as artists in every project, but really literally in this project, it feels like everything we've ever done in our, in our history of, of the arts has led us to making this movie. Right, right. And that's that's what we are, the Fabulous Filipino Brothers. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <laughs> they didn't have to audition. All the auditions were in your head. Yeah, right? exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, like, I mean, like, okay, so this is your, you know, this is your first time directing, right? It's a, it's already a daunting uh, task, and then and then you're acting in it. I mean, like, it's like, I mean, maybe it's a little easier because it's vignettes. So you know, you have like different, like, um, you have your other brothers who are kind of like. Um, the stars in their own kind of story, right? Yeah, so you know, I, got, uh, yeah, I, sure. I got that. I got that luxury. Yeah, you got that luxury, right? But that being said, I mean, I mean, because you have a very kind of uh, you know illustrious, very long career uh, in front of the camera. So, what were some of the kind of like were you just learning on the job, or when you when you decide to okay, okay I'm ready to direct, and why, why not do this with my with my family, right? So, um, yeah, you know. I've produced, I've been producing for like the past decade or so in exclusively Asian American Pacific Islander films. It was yeah. really important to me as I started creating. I started, I, I created a, an Asian American arts collective with AJ Raphael and we started talking about films with new media people and, right. you know, uh, you know, old media people as the new media people would call us. And we yeah. had these all, all these conversations and that led to these conversations that, that led up to things like, you know, like Crazy Rich Asians talking to John M. Chu sure. about things and talking to artists. Of, if we, if we, if we're the Asians in the industry, quote unquote, that have made it, if we don't do something now, where are we at? If it, if we don't do it, then who's gonna do it? It, it, it only yeah. moves us. And all these conversations led up to these things in, in, in some greater or lesser degree. Um, and for me to be a director, like, did I, am I like, I'm not out here like, I'm a director, you know? But I've I've had a very unique, interesting career from break dancer to actor, to voice actor, to poet, to writer, to screenwriter, to playwright, to author of my own memoirs, to pro producer, to director, to now podcaster. Now I'm doing a new podcast with Nickelodeon and in iHeartRadio, I've had a very fascinating, interesting career. As far as directing, you know, it's just an extension of, of what we continue to do, that I continue to do, and my family continues to do, is tell stories. Right. We're storytellers. This yeah. is a very, even though it's a very kind of high, I mean, it's almost a, a fairy tale of sorts of this kind of Filipino-American family. Right it's still personal stories to me and I want and I, and I knew what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it. And I, and I, I'm, you know, I have the good fortune of, of people supporting me to like having me say it. Um, I love directing. I yeah. love being able to um, exercise a lot of skills that I've kind of harnessed over the years about how I see film, how I see storytelling, how I see producing about bringing a family of people together for a short amount of time and getting us all on the same page to tell us, to tell the story, you know, yeah. I mean, know all the master, the masterfulness of, of how the camera moves or this and that and that and this, but everyone directs and tells a story in their own way. And I, and I've been able to find a way to kind of create the village of artists 
for the time I need to create them to kind of get behind me to tell the story that I want to tell in the way I want to tell it. And, and for me as a director, not only do I have a shorthand with my actors, I, I literally can tell Dionisio or Darian, like, hey, what I'm trying, what I want to see here is, remember that one time when you did this, you know, in that yeah. one play when you did that? Right, right, right. Or that TV show when this happened and we were all like, oh my God, that happened. that's what I want. And we were able to oh, talk about it. You guys know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the other thing is you have a, a director of photography, you have Andrea Walter, you have yeah. all these cast members, you have a, a, a production designer doing things and you're trying to inspire everyone for that moment to kind of just all work together to make something and be on the same page. Can we all just understand where we're all at and kind of tell the story what it is today? You know, yeah. actors are going to do what they're going to do. The, 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 the photographers are going to do what they're going to do. The, the, the lighting design is going to do what they're going to do. The production design is going to do what they're going to do. And when it's, it's, and I found out through producing, can I get the best people around me to support me as a first time director? And can I somehow support them in the right way for us all to kind of communicate and be on the same page and kind of take this journey together and trust each other to, um, to make a movie. And in that, in its own way, in that way, it's been like the most beautiful journey. Yeah. I mean, you know what's interesting is like, because, you know, you you got basically, I guess, like greenlit by Signal. Is a Signal? It's like a, you know, Filipino-based yeah. Filipino company, sure. right? So like, so, yes. so like, it's like, I'm interesting, you know, because like, you know, you look at other, like the diaspora, the Filipino diaspora. I mean, you know, you have very much, there's a lot of like um, uh, consumption of like, you know, Philippine based entertainment right pop culture right. And whatnot like so is there i mean like I, I mean i guess maybe it's similar to say south asians or like you know like when it comes to like bollywood films playing in you know outside of india and like in the u.s or something like that uh do you do is there like um i mean other with other kind of communities like diaspora communities like there is that sense of like oh you know pinoy philams are like philam and you know pinoys or pinoys you know what i'm saying it's like like is there you know there's is there like is it because of why is there kind of like more of a a blending of sorts of of, of um, you know like uh, of, of you know the two cultures essentially versus like say you know a Japanese versus and a Japanese well, American experience is very different. I mean, it's a philosophy. It's actually a philosophy. Mm -hmm. I actually have it. I've I if you watch it for the people, I don't know, I'm giving y'all a little Easter egg into the project. Yeah. Um, when I'm on stage during my vignette and I'm, and I'm in the Philippines and I'm talking for my company and no one knows what my company is that I'm talking right, about, right. but there's, there's like a, there's like a big thing printed up on the side and it says borderless Asian media. And it is this philosophy that I've been pitching for the last few years that I kind of created out of me on the borderless Asian media, borderless, you guys, it's about creating media, Asian media in this new Asian media that has no borders. It's about taking notable faces and talent in front of and behind the camera and connecting them with notable talent in front of and behind the camera in Asia, right? And delivering this new kind of hybrid product to the world um, that's digestible, right? Something digestible that maybe fast food, maybe something different, something interesting. Fish sticks. Like, yeah. I don't know what I'm eating. It tastes good. I don't know what is that. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Um, but that's what we it, There's an Easter egg in the film, and people may not get it, but it's fine. What it is, is like, and I did it with Empty by Design with Andrea Walter. We, we, we casted Rian Ramos, one of the big stars in the Philippines, to just yeah. with Osric Chow in a right. in indie film. Same thing with us. We got the Bosco brothers here, but we, we connected us with. Um, with Solen Youssef in the Philippines and we put ourselves in a film together and it's about building bridges. Mm. It's about building bridges of what we're doing here and what they're doing there and us going, us as Asian American Pacific art, uh, artists going into the, our homelands and garnering the audiences that are there and garnering the love. I mean, we are still, I'm Filipino American. I'm still Filipino. I still want to be loved and recognized by my, my people in my homeland to understand that I know who I am. I know who you guys are. I'm connected to you guys. I'm repping you guys. I know I'm speaking English. I know that we, we grew up differently. I, I want you to understand that I, 
I'm not some dumb American that doesn't know who I am. Right. I know who I am. Yeah. I'm connected to you. And I'm bringing, I'm trying to bring all, also the notable stars and talent in front of and behind the camera into America because I want you guys to have a platform in America and a springboard to create stuff here. And that's also a part of, of what we're trying to do with this new borderless Asian media in this new era where we're creating indie films that have no border. Yeah. This is, this is the new world. This is internet. Yeah, we're it's no a, longer a Netflix world, right? Like it's, it's like, Netflix world. It's yeah, like yeah, Squid yeah. Games is like the number one show yeah. on Netflix. Guess right. what? Language subtitles doesn't matter to us. A great right. story is a great story. We're no longer confronted, but but us as as ethnic people in America, we also don't want our people back home. Whether you're Filipino or Korean or Chinese or Japanese, or we don't want you to under we don't want you to think that we don't know who we are. Yo, mm -hmm. hey, we know who we are. We yeah. we still feel connected to you. We still feel right. a pull to you. Your stories, our stories are still the same. I, I mean, there's something in there, even through this mad cat comedy of this family that we're putting out there. There's a our, my heart is still there. Me going back with my my producer partner Ron, 14 times is us telling us, yo, we still we know who we are. We still love where we're from. We want to create new things from where we're from and, and where we are at the same time. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, like this is, I mean, you're, I mean, we love the film and the fact that it's a testament also like not only connecting to your, to the motherland, to Filipinos in the, obviously the Philippines, but the fact that the fa fabulous Filipino brothers world premiered in Austin, Texas, you know, at the South by right. South Film Festival. Crazy. Like, Anderson, like, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, that's crazy. You know, yeah. I know that not everyone will understand how crazy that is. That's yeah. But you and I know that that's kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy. Exactly. And then like it shows that, you know, that uh, there's room for everyone. And obviously, you know, the, the, the you know, culture is changing, you know. Yeah. And, you know, like it's like, it again, perfect example is Squid Game. You know, like it's like yeah, the yeah. center of the world right now of culture. What's crazy you know? is, yeah. okay, so we just, okay, on, you know, it hasn't even been released on dead on Deadline or nothing. We just sold the film. The film is sold. Oh, great. Great. It's coming out. There'll be a press release soon. They might get mad at me, but I'm telling you right now, right? Yeah, so you just, don't have to reveal who yet, but at least you got the, you know, you sold well, the film. I, yeah, so I just, we just sold the film to um, a, a distribution company. They're very excited right. about it. Awesome. And they're not an Asian company. Yeah. They're an American company. Yeah. And when they, they, they told me, the executive's company said, hey, this is the deal. You know, Dante, we love your movie. We want this to be the temple of, of, of this, you know, this quarter for our film. Uh, releases and it's not an Asian film to us. This is not an Asian film. I said, What do you mean? She goes, They're like, Yo, we think that people will see their own families in your family. White people, white families will see their family in your family. Black families, African American families, Latino families will see their family in the madness of your family. And I was like, in my heart, that's what I wanted people to see. I was never good. I never wanted to admit that to people. Like me and my brothers, we watch The Godfather. Mm -hmm. We see ourselves in The Godfather. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We watch My Big Fat Greek Wedding. We see a Filipino family in the Greek family. I never want to, I, I would never in my wildest dreams want to admit that to, you know, a, a corporation. Sure. A, a distribution company and they're telling that to me yeah that's yeah. where we're at yeah. and i'm like hey yo let's let's put this movie out if that's how you guys feel that's ultimately what we want to do i mean i want to entertain my community the asian american community the filipino community i want to i want the filipino community to feel represented and to be seen in the world but i also want the world to see themselves in us just yeah. like we've seen ourselves in them for the last hundred years in Hollywood. Right. Well, that's a great way to end this uh, Q and A, man. Thank you so much. Uh, you are, again, pioneer API royalty, baby. <laughs> hey, get out of here, Anderson. Come on, man. Get out of here. <laughs> I want to thank. Uh, and then, like again, you know, we're we're very fortunate to have Fabulous Filipino, Bro Filipino Brothers at HIF, and also we're screening it on the big screen. So, got three screenings: one on Oahu, one on Maui, and one on Kauai. 
go tell your friends. And if, for all movies, you have to see it in the theaters. So please see this film, and it's going to be a riotous. It's going to be hilarious. You're going to feel the energy. You're going to feel the energy from the crowds. You're going to have a great time. So, so thank you again for watching this discussion today, and a special mahalo to all of our HIF sponsors, board of directors, and our HIF Ohana members. If you're able, please consider donating to HIF. Every dollar counts towards keeping HIF presenting great content like this in the future. Learn more and donate at hif.org/donate. So again, thank you so much, Dante. Nice. Mahalo. Mahalo, man. Thank you. And then we look forward to not only presenting this film, but also all your future work. So congratulations, dude. Thank you.